Well, hey, ladies and gentlemen. Hope everyone's doing all right. We're in a bit of a, uh, a winter storm going on right now. We got uh, heavy sleep, which has turned into some snow, a lot of thunder and lightning. Kind of strange, but uh, always fun to have snow on the ground. Love seeing the red robins everywhere. Of course, for many of you who don't know, the old the old timers used to say that the red robins would show up before the snow and uh there are probably the last three days home says been filled with red robins and now here's the snow so good to see some things are actually true uh let's get into the news like i don't have too much for you today so what i want to do is i want to read a little bit of the news share with you what it is that i uh i think's worthy of looking at first off uh, Joe Biden is now being implicated in some nasty things. Who would ever thought? But Joe apparently has been sharing state secrets with his meth addict son, Hunter Biden. And now more and more things are coming out. Remember how in Mar-a-Lago they found like 20 boxes of classified materials and uh, everyone threw this big fit about Trump? Well. They found over 1,400 boxes just in Delaware so far at a university. Not that's that's belonging to Biden. Not just the fact that it's there. And then they found like however many hundreds are over there in Penn State, uh, which is the think tank that uh, China has spent. I think, gosh, if I'm correct, it's, it's over... 20 million so far. I think it might be 40 million dollars into this think tank that China's paid him. And then also, you know, the debacle with the uh the Corvette. He's uh he's staging state secrets in his damn garage. You can't make this stuff up. You know, this it's people like Joe Biden for why we had to have a Friday safety stand down and we had to read all these new uh classification. Uh, webinar awareness training programs when I was in the government because of people like Joe don't take classified stuff home, Joe. But what's funny is how the media is rallying around Joe Biden right now. They're rallying around him and saying that, well, he's the president, so, you know, he can get a break. Well, the president actually does get a break as in president Trump. But Vice President Biden, who was doing all this, uh, did not have the legal right to do it. Here's a tweet from uh, Representative Andy Biggs of Arizona. And Andy Biggs says, Biden stole classified documents and stored them at his think tank while he was vice president. The vice president does not have any authority to declassify classified documents. And this think tank, oh, I'm, I was way off on the numbers, received $54 million in funding. $54 million in funding from the Communist Chinese Party, CCP. For all of you representatives out there, members of the government who don't know that yet, uh, the, the Chinese are communist. So when you have a president, a vice president that is being paid by them. Is that not like a conflict of interest? Shouldn't the department of justice be having probes into this guy? Shouldn't, shouldn't we be having OIG surfing through this dude's text messages and his emails 
his his phone calls, his business transfers, anything to do online. Like, shouldn't we be doing that? Because what has this man given away? Or maybe the better question is, what hasn't he given away? Here's a little update from the Ford Observer. Um, which, by the way, it's like ten dollars a month. Ford Observer, it's the uh, the daily essay. I highly recommend people um, purchase this. It's probably one of the best situational awareness briefings as a civilian that you're going to get, and it's just as good as what the government gets. There's just not some classified stuff in there, but this is just as good. It's a bunch of veterans who were some intel bubbas, and they do a phenomenal job. Phenomenal. Look, I'm going to do this again for all you who don't like Trump, but who think that this is like a white supremacist symbol. Whenever I do the OK sign, you know, or or the Illuminati symbol, whatever. All right, he did. They, they just these guys do a phenomenal job. Let's get into it. Inside the Beltway. What's going on at the White House? President Biden is scheduled to deliver remarks on the Infrastructure Investment and Jobs Act funding that uh, replaced the 150-year-old Baltimore and Potomac Tunnel in Baltimore, Maryland. Okay. Nobody really cares about that. Congress. Congress, what are you looking at? The House Rules Committee is scheduled to debate four COVID-19-related bills, including H.R. 497, which would eliminate the COVID-19 vaccine mandate for healthcare workers and HR 382, which would end the COVID-19 state of emergency declared in March of 2020. Twenty bucks says we're going to be back into it before August. I hope it all gets canceled. I hope it all gets canceled. 20 bucks says we'll we'll be back into it shortly. Don't you worry. It's why would you let go of such a great and and I mean this facetiously but such a great way of uh controlling the movement of people. Why would you let go of that? You know, since the introduction of the whole COVID policy and the lockdown and all that other stuff that came with it, we've now got this new idea that came to us from Europe. And it's now being applied in Canada. Oh, Canada. Now you too will be looking at 15-minute cities. Little bit of homework for all of you who listen to me. 15-minute cities. You more or less can't drive. You'll have a bicycle or you can walk everywhere. Your job, your grocery store, your entertainment will all be within 15 minutes of where you live. It sounds like they want to put you in a hamster wheel yet. I swear, like the more this stuff like is coming out every day, I look back and I think, was George Orwell actually a prophet? You know, how did this guy see all this stuff coming? Which, you know, after 84 comes Animal Farm. So for all you useless eaters out there, if you don't know it, look up 84, 1984. And then Animal Farm. Um, I ain't got the time to explain it to you. Let's just say it's not good. Like the 15-minute cities. They want to tell you it's good, though. Remember a couple of years ago? You'll own nothing and you'll love it. You won't own your own home. You'll be uh, hot-seating, which is an old military term. Is whenever I roll out of my rack, my bunk, whatever it is that you'll be sleeping in at that point in time, you're going to work. And then someone's coming off from work and sleeping where you slept. So, ergo, you don't really have a home. You work for the man. Every day. You work for the man, and he owns your life. How about that? Well, COVID-19, once again, that's the best way to control everybody. We'll have another boogeyman scare soon. I'm sure we'll have another one. House Oversight Committee is set to clash over probes. 16 out of 20 Democrats. Uh, House Minority Leader Hakeem Jeffries put forward the House Oversight and Accountability Committee are members of the Congressional Progressive Caucus. This, loose, this list includes 
excuse me, uh, House Minority Rip Greg Cesar of Texas, Democrat, and Representatives Ro uh, Kana of California, Alexandria Occasional Cortez, and Corey Bush. I dislike everyone that I just said. Ranking committee member Jamie Raskin called the Democrats on the committee the Truth Squad. The Truth Squad. And so that they would conduct thorough and fact based oversight. Fact based. Right. Fact based. Let's talk about facts for a second. Um, weather modification. That's a fact. Gene altering drugs. That's a fact. Um, genetically modified organisms for you to eat. That that's a fact. Getting rid of all protein sources so you eat bugs and regurgitated meat processes. Yeah, that'll be a fact. Taking away your guns. Yeah, that'll be a fact, along with your First Amendment and every other right that you'll give up. That and I said you'll give up because you'll either fight for them or you'll give them up. Uh, Joe Biden's a traitor. Well, there's a fact. President Trump was one hell of a president to work for, and I hope he gets it back. That's a fact. But my salvation doesn't lie with Trump. It lies with our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Skull to all you of the Nordic blood type. What we see is government doublespeak. I remember a long time ago when I was in college and I was, I learned about this whole government doublespeak and it's all coming true, you know, um, especially with the light of DHS saying that, Hey, you know, pretty much hate speech is going to be frowned upon and then eventually be incarcerated for it. Right. We put on a terrorism watch list for hate speech. Or misinformation, malinformation. At the um, Davos meeting with WEF, there was a lady, European leader out there, who said that soon the hate speech laws and, and stuff against the freedom of the press will start taking effect here in America. And I'll tell you what, this is the wrong guy to be messing with right now. Or should I say he he's the right president for their terms. Joe Biden's the wrong guy for us. He's the right guy for the world. He's the right guy for the new world order. And when China said that they put their guy in charge and they laughed about it, they meant it. Joe Biden's their man. Bought and paid for. How's he not in handcuffs yet? Any one of you right now if you've done half of what Joe Biden has done, you're going to be in prison without bail, vigorously interrogated, asset forfeiture, everything. You're going to lose it all. Joe Biden gets to uh, be the <laughs> Joe Biden gets to be the top dog, though. We're so screwed if we don't find a way out of all this. Once again, is this just prophecy being fulfilled? And it has to be. I don't know. Protests have uh, spread across the country. I was actually watching a riot happening last night in L.A. That's Los Angeles, not uh, Louisiana. Uh, protests have spread to multiple cities across the country, including New York City, Atlanta, Boston, Baltimore, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Portland. Gee, shocker on that one. Phoenix and Dallas. Really, Dallas? Well, go figure. You know, a couple of years ago when this whole thing with George Floyd kicked off, we were sitting in, uh, sitting over in the Fort Worth office, and we got the call, hey, there's going to be massive protests going on tonight and probably riots in Dallas. Get your team, get your gear, and get your asses over to Dallas. Roger that. And off we go. And it was a whole night of sitting and waiting. And by the time we arrive, actually, by the time we arrived, they'd already broken out 
windows from one of the doors at uh, 1100 Commerce. That's the big federal courthouse, federal building. And I'll tell you the the thing that I saw from the 2020 riots that I have not seen from this going on right now is they have lost the thunder. When the riots had happened in 2020, there was some money being thrown around. We we saw so much of it. We heard so much about it. We saw so much uh, footage that was on social media about it. But, you know, one thing that's really interesting to me is that it's not there this time. Like, you know, you would think that what happened to this poor guy, um, Tyree Nichols, I hope I got his name right. I probably didn't. Um, but when his when the video of his death was released, you know, if you don't know me, I worked for the Department of Homeland Security for 10 years. And for um, for many years, I was a use of force instructor, which goes over stuff like this. Post-incident responses to uses of force and all different kinds of stuff. And, you know, when we say that we're going to throw the book at you if you uh, if you violate people's rights or if you, you know, don't use force correctly or whatever. Well, this is the book that gets thrown at you because we comb through the books that the lawyers and the DOJ agreed upon. And we say, okay, he did everything correct except for this, you know, and, and all we do is we say, this is what, he, what the guy did wrong. You know, you could either be called up to the stand to court to testify as a subject matter expert. And, um, <sighs> You know, I'll just say that as as a, as someone who has reviewed hundreds and hundreds of use of force reports, I ain't never seen nothing like this. I saw them hold that man down and football kick him like like he was uh, kicking the winning field goal. There's an old saying that I got taught whenever I became a cop that when the handcuffs go on. The fighting stops. Now, your subject could still be resisting, and there are countermeasures for that. You can hobble them. Hobbling is a a um, kind of like a dog collar or a dog leash that you would wrap around someone's legs so that they can't kick you or run away. There's also other forms of compliance that you could be doing, like pepper spray or drive stuns from a taser. Um, but you know, that's all circumstantial and that's all based off of what the officer is seeing right there. And you're judged based off of your actions on the objectionably reasonable test. So what would any objectionably reasonable officer do at this point in time? Now, what happened at Tyree Nichols and these five guys who I I'll say killed them, they killed them. I will give. No bones about it. I'm not protecting anybody on this one. You know, even if uh, even if Tyree was known to him, even if he was running from him, there's no excuse for what happened. And now there's a bunch of other stuff coming out um, about the the Memphis Police Department, how they drastically lowered their standards for officers and. Hey, you know what? If they did that, that's on the city. I hope the family sues the living hell out of the city and gets a gazillion dollars out of it. But there's the, the morality that should be in an officer. The level of, of care and love and the need to serve and protect was missing this day. And this was the utter violence that we have been warned about, like in the days of Noah, this type of just violence without discretion. You know, one of the things that, that you teach cops, especially I taught my guys, and because we all got taught this, always assume you're being recorded and act accordingly. Don't say stupid stuff. 
Don't do stupid stuff. Don't try and look crazy. Um, don't try and intimidate and, and all this other stuff that's just really bad in the limelight. You can't get away with that type of stuff no more. So, you know, and not only that, but for the most part, no one's covering for you anymore either. So those days are kind of long gone. What happened here is just tragic. Now there's a, there's a gentleman who showed up. His name's Benjamin Crum. And, uh, he's a lawyer. He was, I think the lawyer for the George Floyd family and all this damn guy did this vampiric leech was cause problems. I hope he doesn't cause problems this time. I hope he actually is there for the family. Um, this guy spurred riots on last time. So we'll see what happens. Uh, here, let's let's keep going. Oh, and by the way, Antifa. How could I not talk about you, Antifa? My favorite subject. My favorite hippies I used to love to stand on. Antifa is now riding all across the country. Um, what I was watching last night in Los Angeles. And I'll, I could probably take a video and show you guys. Maybe I, I might do that today. Uh, but when they're in black block, all right, so that's all black. So their their faces are covered because they're cowards. They're all wearing the same black clothing. That's so that they can't be easily distinguishable um, whenever there's any type of footage and violent actions. It's hard to say it was this person over there. You, you know, for us, we would have to get easily identifiable attributes of a person so that we can identify, positively identify one of these people for one of their violent actions. So that's why they go in black block so that you can't easily identify anybody, but you can be looking out for the ones that are in all black. They all do the same thing because they ain't trained very well, but they all do the same thing. They'll keep their head down, their hoodie or, or, or hood over their head. Most of the time they always have a backpack and it's always a little punks too. It's it's like either punk women or little punk men. Ain't ain't none of them a real man or a real woman. Because why would you be out here doing this? Um, but what I saw last night was one of the characteristics of of the normal Antifa guys that get paid to be in these crowds, and their actions that they take are to stir up the crowd and to start violence. And what this little punk was doing is he probably had the old lock in a sock walking around breaking windows. You know, I mean, it's petty. Costs a lot of money to fix these this type of stuff, but it's real petty. But it's what's in the backpack. And on multiple occasions that we've made arrests on these people, we found large daggers, buoy knives, machetes, um, two feet of chain for what? right? Two feet of chain because it's a melee weapon that they would use to whip and hit people. You almost always find a lock in there that they would conveniently lock at the end of it. Um, you know, they, they would have fireworks, which within itself, that that's an improvised explosive device because it's not being used the way that it was intended. Hello, ATF, FBI, wake up. But in 2020, the, the violence was much higher. There was a lot of money going out. George Soros was able to pay for all that violence, and we know it. And the government tracked it. And the government knew where it was coming from. And the government knew politicians that were getting part of that money. I wonder what happened to those investigations. However, what's happening right now is very, very low, uh, low energy. So there must not be a lot of money going out. We'll see if there's any spurs that will happen. This violence that's, that's happening right now will carry over to 2024 for the election season. It will grow. So don't think any of this is going to go away. Egg farm burns down on Saturday. Connecticut-based uh, Hillendale Farms uh, 
has burned down. That's sad. Unconfirmed reports claim that 100,000 chickens are dead. The cause of the fire is unknown at this time. There's been speculation that it may have not been an accident. Although authorities have reported what caused the fire, the loss is expected to put pressure on the already record high egg prices. So as many of you already know, we're a, we are a small uh, poultry producing farm and it's hard for us right now as breeders to try and find other breeders to restock what we lost over the winter and over the summer. And as companies like this, these big ones, these are the ones that they make the eggs that you go to the store and get, you know, over the summer, they, we lost another one where they lost like 3 million chickens because of whatever, uh, disease. I tell people this all the time. Don't rely upon anybody else to feed your family. It is too easy. If you have the means and the availability from where you live to set up a chicken coop and chickens, it's too easy to do it. All right. You don't have to have a big spread like I do, and you don't have to have a thousand chickens like we do, but it does help because it's commodity. Whenever the dollar fails, you'll have a means to a feed yourself, b barter with. I'm, I'm a man who's very big on bartering, bartering skills, um, tools, time. You know, I mean, th these are things that people will need. So consider them. Western countries will send 321 tanks to Ukraine. Ukrainian ambassador to France, Vadim Almoshenko, said numerous Western countries confirmed that they would send a total of 321 tanks to Ukraine. According to Almoshenko, delivery dates for the tanks will be dependent on the type of tank and country of origin. By the time these tanks get there, Russia would probably own half of uh, Ukraine. I haven't been following this in the past couple of days exactly, uh, but the fighting is continuous in Ukraine. And I've been saying this for a reason because I knew this was going to happen. I knew it was going to happen. Eventually, we're going to have to send tracked vehicles into Ukraine for these guys to pilot. The only problem with that is that they don't know what to do with them. They don't have the tank crews. They don't have the weapons bays. They don't have the maintenance bays. So how are you going to rearm them? How are you going to refit them? How are you going to repair them? Who the hell is going to drive them? You have to have military advisors come in now, and we have to teach them how to do all that. Well, when they die, are we going to let top secret material that's just sitting out there in the open for the Ruskies to come in and take, you know, take apart, create their own stuff or figure out where the weaknesses are? You have to think about the level of stupidity that is in our government. Back in the summer, if you if you recall, and, and most of you probably shouldn't or won't because Joe Biden is a laughing stock, but I'm going to quote Joe Biden for a second. Joe Biden said to send planes and tanks into Ukraine is World War III. It would be World War III. And now we're sending planes and tanks into Ukraine. Either um, unmanned aerial craft like drones or tanks. And these, these weapons will be used to kill Russians. So that's going to give Vladimir Putin everything he needs to say, well, thank you. 
United States for just becoming a, a, a new fresh target for us. And they said they would. Russia said it. Whoever brings in any types of tanks or other assets into Ukraine, you got put on our naughty list. And now Russia seeks a new level of alliance with China. According to a statement on Monday by Russia's foreign ministry, Russia is seeking a deepening of its alliance with China. Russian media announced that the two nations' leaders would meet in Moscow sometime in February. The planned meeting between the Russian and Chinese officials will likely focus on increasing trade with the alliance and its growing number of client states. It is also likely that Russia will pitch increased military cooperation and coordination in opposition to NATO, which both countries view as a threat. If you never thought, let me speak to all the detractors right now. If you never thought now was a was a, a good time to prep, you you are blind. You are absolutely blind to what's going on around the world. Let me give you some of Doug's advice real quick. Now, I know because there's a lot of stuff going on, the economy sucks. And we're all still trying to repair ourselves from what happened in 2020 uh, with all the lockdowns. Get food, water, medicine, something for bartering. The tools, the nails, the screws, the duct tape. Get what you can while you can to keep your homestead up and going. I say that because the day they devalue the dollar, absolute chaos is going to happen in this country. The day that we declare war against Russia, absolute chaos is going to happen in this country. Because then Russia and China will declare war back, and ain't none of us prepared for that, ladies and gentlemen. I know I get I get petitioned a lot by people to uh, say, Doug, do a, a survival and prepping podcast. It's not that I'm not big on doing stuff like that. I just think there's so many other people out there better than, than me the, at that. But here, here's my basics. You need to have, let's see how much this even sounds affordable, right? You need to have, realistically, three pallets of water for your family for maybe three months. A pallet of water, of water a month. And I'll base this off of my family. I got a big family, all right? So there's uh, there's seven of us. So every day, everybody needs to drink between a half gallon to a gallon of water. Depending on what's going on, I'm, I may be drinking more water. However, you'll need water to bathe with, which doesn't take too much unless you get really, really dirty. And you'll need water to cook with, which will be almost every day because if the power goes down, you better be boiling stuff. Or cooking it black, burnt, to make sure there's no little nasty bugs in it. You're going to need a lot of firewood. A lot of firewood to keep yourselves warm, to cook with. Don't cook inside your house with an open flame. Unless you got like a jet bowl system or something else like that. But um, you know, if you're going to cook outside, have a place that's designated for cooking outside not near your propane tank or your electrical lines that could be a bad day you're gonna need a lot of food you know i mean for for the working man especially if we go into world war three and you know it's time for us to start forming up groups of men um and women hell i'd, I'd welcome women as well um you know, you're going to need a lot of food, a lot of calories. Uh, base your caloric intake off of probably three to 4,000 calories a day. 
for what we used to do for actually patrolling, wearing all the gear, having to work. Um, you know, if you're working with cattle, if you're working as a, as a utility man, you know, plumber, craftsman, whatever, you're building stuff all the time and you're on patrol and you're having to stay up at night to be able to watch over your family and you're having to make the, the, you know, daily, weekly security meetings and, and you're having to break down all this stuff to keep your community thriving and alive. Or don't forget if you're sick and you're a doctor or a nurse and you're traveling to all these places, you're going to need a lot of calories. Or if you're a firefighter, man, they probably need the most amount of calories. We don't think about it, but we buy these buckets of food everywhere, right? Everybody's selling them. Buy my bucket of food. You don't know what the hell's in it until it's the last minute and you crack it open and it tastes like dog food. And don't sit here and tell me at that point in time, well, I'll eat whatever I can. No, you won't. You're picky. Most of you are picky. I'm picky. So get food that is good. Get as much as much of it as you can. But try to grow and harvest as much of it as you can. I'll tell you something that's foolproof, okay? I'll tell you something that's foolproof for uh, for meat. Vegetables is hard. The freaking, if the moon glows too bright sometimes, it'll kill your vegetables. God, I don't, I don't have a green thumb. I'm not very good at that. But rabbit meat, chicken meat, eggs, geese, guinea fowl. I'll tell you the hardiest bird that's out there is a guinea fowl. Nothing wants to eat it except for my dog Vader. And I mean, extreme heat, extreme cold, those things will not die. (laughs) So you can breed you a whole bunch of guinea fowl. That's one of the projects I have going on right now, make it a tunnel to keep uh, guinea fowl in. That's what I'm going to feed my dogs with, and I'm going to get them off of this dog food. Between and it's it's fairly simple if you want to know what I mean. Um, with the guinea fowl, all you got to do is just boil them, peel all the freaking feathers off of them, uh, cut them into you know eatable chunks, give it to your dogs. My dogs are half and half. My livestock guard dogs will eat anything. If there's a dead chicken. Or like recently, my last duckling just died. Oh, made me so mad. Um, I just went over there and gave it to one of my dogs. Um, He's he's probably my more favorite dog. Me and my wife have two separate ones. That one likes her and one likes me. But I went over to Fafnir and I gave him a duckling. Here's your food for the day. You know, many of you out there who who have pets, how are you going to feed them? When prophecy has hit the fan, or you're just going to let them loose and let them roam that within itself. I dealt with that in Iraq, the, uh, the roving bands of dogs that would come up and attack people. Strangest story. Um, we went to Syria. We was heading to Syria. Heck, I can't remember what we went there for, but this was either 2007 or this was 2008 or 2009. Heck, I can't remember. Um, But we were heading to Syria, and we get there to go pick up a bunch of people and bring them back to Al-Anbar province. And I remember seeing a dog run around with a hand in its mouth. Dogs will eat people if you don't know that, so be prepared for that one. But, yeah, it's pretty simple. Uh, Rabbits. Rabbits are a good source of meat. They uh, they reproduce quite quickly. You can fatten them up quite quite quickly. I'll uh, we're actually going to be getting rabbits here pretty soon, the big ones, great great big size rabbits. You know the the best part about that is you can reuse the fur. So you know once again barter and trade. But rabbit meat tastes good. Um, you know you can. Throw them into a Ziploc bag after you've quartered it up and gutted it and cleaned it all out and put in your deep freeze and you're done. Or if you need to and, you know, 
times are really bad, just go out there and grab your hair, kill it, skin it, eat it. There's food for the day. But they they reproduce quite quickly, and they're very easy to take care of. You know, they don't really damage anything. But with rabbits, you have to know this. You need something to cover the ground, like um, some sort of a, a metal mesh or, or cyclone fencing or something over the ground. That way they don't burrow out because they will do that. We've lost a couple of them like that. All right, let's keep moving. China Coast Guard drives out Japanese vessels from Japan's islands, uh, Senaku, Senkaku Islands. I probably butchered that. Chinese Coast Guard drove away uh, Japanese fishing vessels over their islands in the East China Sea on Monday, according to the China state-backed media. A Chinese spokesperson urged Japan to stop all illegal activities in the Chinese waters. So. You know, the threat of violence is cooking up all around the world right now. It's eventually going to boil over. We're going to have a world war. It's going to happen. United States general tells troops war with China is possible within two years. Within two years. Huh? What has Doug been saying? I've been saying in the last probably year that I've been doing this, we'll be at war with China in like two years. You watch this, and I I do believe this. When our economy tanks and the U.S. dollar is deplatformed and the Chinese yuan becomes number one, they will attack us, and the world will back them. In a linked memorandum dated 1 February, United States Air Force Air Mobility Commander General Michael Minahan said that the United States and China could be at war within two years. General Minahan said Chinese President Xi's team, reason, and opportunity are aligned for 2025. Hmm. 2025. So they are probably waiting to see who's going to be the president. Here's my prediction on that one. If Biden or some other reprobate becomes the president, they'll declare war. If China sees that Trump becomes president again or someone like Ron DeSantis, they won't declare war because we'll go over there and kick that ass and there ain't nothing they can do about it. There ain't nothing you can do about it, China. But you could take out the power, and that would suck greatly. <sighs> That's the thing I'm always worried about. Dang power grid. Chinese nuclear program used United States-made chips years after ban. According to a procurement document, the state-run China Academy of Engineering and Physics obtained United States-made semiconductors on the open market despite being placed on an export blacklist in 1997. Well, I wonder who gave them that. All right. Israel attacks Iran weapon facility. If you hadn't watched what happened in Iran recently, this is pretty significant. Uh, their country was just attacked. And I, I thought surely if Iran's going hot, things are going bad really, really fast. Here, let's read this. Unmanned U.S. officials, or excuse me, unnamed U.S. officials said Israel carried out a drone strike targeting a military compound in Iran. Iranian officials said that they downed three small drones targeting a munitions factory next to the Iran Space Research Center, which is in the city of Isfahan, Isfahan. Now, this was a pretty significant attack. I mean, there was, I think, three different compounds that were attacked at that point in time. Now, for many of you, if you haven't heard me talk about this, I'll talk about it now. There was, there's an operation that was pulled up straight from the horse's mouth called Operation Nitro Zeus.
Okay. Nitro Zeus is the project name for a well-funded comprehensive cyber attack that's a, a cyber attack plan created as a mitigation strategy after the Stuxnet uh, malware campaign and its aftermath. Unlike Stuxnet, that was loaded into a system after the design phase to affect its proper operation. Nitro Zeus's objectives are built into a system during the design phase, unbeknownst to the system users. This built-in feature allows a more assured and effective cyber attack against the system's users. Now, if you look up Nitro Zeus, you'll find one of two things. One is going to be a supposed cyber attack, and the other one is going to be the thing that I know of. And what I know of was Special Operations. United States Special Operations was, was, is, has been working on a way to um, completely cut the head off the snake and to take out the um, nuclear fusion centers that are in Iran. Now, I won't get into that operation, but what was so significant about it was that they had determined that they would lose up to 80% of all operators, 80%. And that means like died. And this would be on, you know, Israel attacking Iran, us attacking Iran, huge bombardments from the sky, and then either pair jumps or some sort of infiltration. Extremely risky, but is it worth the risk? And what would Russia do? And what would China do if we attacked one of their allies? I used to think that this type of operation long ago thought of was no longer a reality because those times have passed. Every month I go back to that operation and I think, is this when we're going to do it? Is this when we're finally going to launch this huge and huge invasion? Who knows, man, the day that happens, it's too late though. World War would have been, um, definitely would have been acknowledged at that point in time. Iran's military is on high alert. Uh, this is coming to you from Tyler Durden over there at Zero Hedge. Uh, they're on high alert as an inbound drone attack was foiled on the country's central city of Isfahan late Saturday night. The target was reportedly a military factory there, and immediate suspicion has fallen on Israel as being behind the operation. The ministry said that at least three, uh, three drones were involved, one being intercepted by anti-air systems. However, the extent of damage is unconfirmed, and no casualties were reported. Widely circulating social media footage suggests large, powerful explosions in more than one location in the country and one instance of an oil refinery on fire. And here we go, war monitor. This is a uh, tweet. Reportedly drone attack on munitions plant in Isfahani, Iran. U.S. and Zionist regimes at work. There's a lot going on with this right now. Um, I think it's something for all of us to watch because we just concluded the biggest ever United States and Israel uh, joint military exercise that was aimed at Iran. The U.S. and Israel on Thursday announced the conclusion of the largest ever joint military exercise known as Juniper Oak 23. The drills were launched Monday and involved over 140 aircraft and nearly 8,000 troops from both militaries. 
The massive show of force was clearly a provocation toward Iran, despite claims from the United States officials that it was aimed at any one country. United States Central Command and the Israeli Defense Forces concluded Juniper Oak 23.2, the largest U.S.-Israel partnered exercise in history, says CENTCOM. CENTCOM, Central Command, said that the drills have included a live fire exercise that involved B-52s, F-35s, F-15s, F-16s, FA-18s, AC-130s, AH-64s, and 12 naval assets, high-mobility rocket artillery systems, multiple launch rocket systems, a mix of jet fighters, and long-range bombers. Sound like Operation Nitro Zeus yet? To me, it sounds like they're preparing for it. If we... I'm telling you, folks, if we approach the border of Iran with aircraft, World War III has started. Or maybe it'll be during World War III, who knows. The RAND Corporation, famous uh, government think tank, has finally said that the U.S. and NATO officials have unhesitatingly and enthusiastically cheered on every major escalation of the West's involvement. Rand now argues that in Ukraine, United States interests would be best served by avoiding a protracted conflict, and that costs and risk of a long war outweigh the possible benefits. (laughs) What are the benefits of us going to war? See, It won't be their sons and daughters going to war. It'll be yours. It'll be mine. Or maybe yourself listening right now. Turkey has issued a terror alert to its citizens traveling in West, um, throughout the West areas, Western countries, after Quran burnings happened in Sweden. Turkey issued an alert to its citizens traveling abroad in the West on Saturday describing possible Islamophobic, xenophobic, and racist attacks in the United States and Europe due to increases in anti-Islam and racist acts. Turkey's foreign ministry over the weekend issued no less than two separate travel advisories coming in the wake of Quran burnings and incidents in Sweden which have set tensions between Ankara and Stockholm to a boiling point. And now they're complaining because there are people in Sweden that are burning the Holy Quran while law enforcement stands back and watches. You know... Provocation for war is growing quickly. And it is a money making scheme, if you were not aware. It is definitely a money making scheme, but it ain't slowing down. Has anyone else noticed the theme of today? It's not slowing down at all. WHO suddenly updates medicines list for nuclear emergencies. Gee, I wonder why they would be doing that. Maria uh, Nira, the head of the WHO's Public Health and Environmental Department, emphasized the importance of having ready supplies of crucial drugs developed over the last decade. Quote, in radiation emergencies, people may be exposed to radiation at doses ranging from negligible to life-threatening. Governments need to make treatments available for those in need. Fast. Also, this was from 2007. This quote, not the last one. Uh, This updated critical medicines list will be vital preparedness and readiness tool for our partners to identify, procure, stockpile, and deliver effective countermeasures in a timely fashion to those at risk of exposure 
in these events. That's from Dr. Mike Ryan, the executive director of WHO's Health Emergencies Program. So the first time they said, hey, everybody better, <laughs> better have anti-radiation pills was in 2007, okay? And they just announced it again. I wonder what they're seeing that we're not. Radiological and nuclear emergencies. According to the WHO, a radiological or nuclear emergency is a situation that negatively impacts human life, uh, health, property, or the environment. The report considers possible scenarios for radiological and nuclear emergencies, including accidents at nuclear power plants and nuclear warfare. Uh, it won't be an accident. Whatever happens won't be an accident. We have on uh, Wednesday, we're going to have a, uh, a pastor on who's going to give us a, a sermon. That should be nice. We got a training course coming up February 17th to the 20th. If you would like to come out, hang out, get some training in. Learn how to better defend yourself during a grid down scenario, active shooter scenario, terrorist attack, home invasion, you name it. Come hang out with us. We're going to be doing very, very intense medical training. Uh, we're going to be doing a little bit of a survival, evasion, resistance training. A lot of tactics, learning how to use your, your weapons properly. The greatest part about this training that I'm putting on is that you don't have to travel with your guns. I provide them all. I provide you these nifty little airsoft guns. They're pretty nice. Now's the time to prepare. Now's the time to get your training. Now's the time to get all your preps in order. Get your life in order. Get your soul in order. You know, if you're not going to take any of this other preparedness stuff seriously, uh, at least take your eternal soul seriously and get right with God. The training course is at readymaderesources.com. In the description below from this video, you will see the information on it. If you want any further information on it, you can contact myself at American Vindicta Show at gmail.com or ready-made resources. You can talk to Bob Griswold himself about this course, and he'll tell you why it's going to be pertinent for you. We're going to be going uh, hands-on with night vision and thermal optics for all of you who've never got to put them on before and play around with them. We're going to show you why they're useful and why you may want to consider investing one of them, in one of them. Uh, we're going to have a lot of people there of various backgrounds that you're going to be able to pick their brain to include a, um, a special forces medic. So anything medicine wise, which I think is probably right next to communications going to be one of the, the skills that are going to be most needed guys, most needed, you know, obviously then it would be your combatives training, but those three things, communications, medicine, combatives training. For all you men out there, if you don't have this training, please come see me. Let me get you squared away. If you can't make the training or you can't afford it, it's $850 for four days. You're not going to find that price anywhere at all. That price is usually $2,000 for four days of training. But if you can't find uh, the availability to come out to the training and you still want training, you still want to learn what you can be doing to help better yourself, email me. I'll, I'll, I'll sit there and I'll chat with you. We'll figure out a way to, uh, to help you and your family. This, that's what this is all about is helping you and your family. All right. That's all I got for today. I'm going to go outside and enjoy the snow. That's a joke. <laughs> all my pipes are frozen. So I got to go outside and get to work. Uh, make sure you're going to the gym. You're beating feet on that, on that pavement. You're getting your, uh, your heart going. The last thing we need is for a bunch of y'all to fall out because you're out of shape and you're fat. 
And for anyone who's injured, I'm not I'm not poking fun at you. I'm saying for the average male who's listening to me, you have no excuse. So get up off of your excuse and go to the gym. Push-ups are free. You can do them right there at the ground. Anyways, that's all I got. I love you all. May the, uh, the joy of our Lord be with you today and this week. I'll see you soon. Stay frosty. The enemy's out there. Klaus Schwab from the World Economic Forum has said, you will own nothing and you will love it. And that's represented by what's going on across the planet today, where the economy of the world is in free fall. And nowhere is it more in evidence than with our own President Biden deliberately trying to sabotage what we have, access to food, other resources. So Americans are in a unique position, really for the first time in our history, we're going to have to provide for ourselves or subject ourselves to the whim of the government. Do you really trust a government to feed you that left a thousand Americans behind enemy lines in Afghanistan? I don't think so. So where do you go? When you ask the question, who's the best prepper out there today? There's only one answer. Ready-made resources and Robert Griswold. I call him King Prepper, and that's how a lot of people think of him. You have everything there you'd want from night vision to storable food, how to prepare cooking in emergency situations, books and videos on how to prepare alternative energy, communication, first aid that you wouldn't think of, natural antibiotics, you name it, Bob has it. Now, here's the good thing about Bob Griswold that no one else does but him. You don't have to buy anything to talk to him. If you're not sure where to start with your preparation, no obligation phone call directly to Bob. You can talk to him for free. Most people will charge you an arm and a leg for a half hour conversation. That's not Bob Griswold. He cares about helping America get prepared. Go to readymaderesources.com or you can call the number directly at 800-627-3809. Again, that contact information readymaderesources.com for the best prepping outfit in the country or call Bob Griswold directly 800-627-3809 Mountain State Survival covers your basis for your planning, prepping, evacuation, bugging in or bugging out needs. They carry anything from educational material, camping supplies, emergency services supplies, food, first aid, survival kit and equipment, shooting gear, survival gear, tactical gear. They carry it all. They got it in stock. Give Mountain State Survival a ring. That's mountain-state-survival.com. Get this type of supplies while you still can. 304-517-6900. Three, five. Mountain State Survival is one of the only places that I know of currently that is still carrying the delicious peak refuel meal that is ready to eat. It's personally the only thing that I eat at this point whenever I go out camping, whenever we have any type of emergency or disaster situation. That is the meal that I stick with, and you can find that at mountain-state-survival.com. Use Wrecker 5 for a 5% discount on your overall purchase. That's R-E-K-K-R 5, mountainstatesurvival.com. This show on the Heroes Nation app, um, Heroes Nation is uh, the Heroes Nation app you can download in the App Store. 
Uh, it's up and coming. They got a lot of cool information on there. That is the main backup site so far for the American Vindictive Show. Uh, you'll, we'll also have some stuff on there that won't be on YouTube. It won't be on Rumble. It'll either be only on the gsradio.net, who is the uh, host of the American Vindictive Show, or it will only be an exclusive for Heroes Nation. And with that, I mean, you know, stuff that we're doing with the cave exploration, with the archaeological stuff. Uh, I'm going to start getting into a lot of paranormal talks and, you know, coming at that from my law enforcement and Christian perspective and be having guests on and that will be exclusive to Heroes Nation. So make sure that you give them some love. Thank you, everybody, for listening. Thank you, everybody, for supporting me. God bless you and have a good day.